is the 1970s. Significant events take place around the world during this time. The Beatles would break up. UK will lower its legal voting age to 18. And a psychologist by the name of Tajwell would conduct investigations to allow us to know why discrimination takes place. These are his experiments. Does categorization of people in different groups cause them to discriminate against one another? To find out, Tajfel conducts two experiments. For both the experiments, he chose 64 schoolboys from a common schoolhouse. This was important as it meant that the boys knew each other well beforehand and some were even friends. In the first experiment, Tajfel told the boys they now had to estimate the number of dots flashed onto the screen. After the boys had estimated the number of dots, they were divided into two separate groups. After they had been divided into groups, the boys were individually told by the experimenter they now had to allocate positive and negative points to the other boys in the experiment. The boys were also told that they would get real-life money based on how much points their team had at the end of the experiment. The boys were given three options on which how they would allocate points. They could choose to allocate both positive and negative points to their own group member. And because both positive and negative points are allocated to their own group members, this is known as the in-group choice. Or they could choose the second option in which they could allocate both positive and negative points to the members of the other group. And because both positive and negative points would be allocated to the members of the other group, this is known as the out-group choice. Or they could go with the third option in which they could choose one random person from their own group and another random person from the other group and assign one of them positive points and assign one of them the negative points. To whom they assign the positive points and negative points would be totally up to them. If the boys choose to allocate positive points to their own group member and negative points to the other group member, it would be clear that discrimination has taken place. In the second experiment, the boys were shown two paintings. They were asked to pick which painting they liked the most. Based on their preference, they were divided into two groups. Now, like in the first experiment, the boys were instructed to allocate points. But unlike in the first experiment, the choices were a bit different. Instead of positive and negative numbers, this time the choices would consist of maximum and minimum points. The boys could go with option number one, in which they would allocate the maximum number of points to their own as well as the other group. This would mean both groups would have the maximum number of points. And because both groups have maximum number of points, both groups could go home with the maximum reward. This would be known as the win-win situation. Or the boys could go with the second option, in which they could allocate the maximum number of points to the member of their own group regardless of what the member of the other group got in that situation. Or the boys could choose to go with the third option, in which they could choose to allocate the largest number of points to the member of their own group and the smallest number of points to the member of the other group. This option would actually allow the boys to maximize the difference in points and hence maximize the difference in rewards given to them at the end of the experiment. This would lead one group to win and the other group to lose thus causing a win-lose situation. So did the boys discriminate against one another? Well, in the first experiment, the boys actually chose to go with option number three and allocated positive points to the member of their own group and negative points to the member of the other group, meaning that discrimination was evident in the first experiment. In the second experiment, the boys would also go with option number three, the win-lose situation, in which they would allocate the maximum number of points to the member of their own group and the smallest number of points to the member of the other group. 
This was important as it meant that the boys discriminated against one another. Even though they were from a common school house, they knew each other well beforehand and some even knew their friends would be part of the other group which they clearly discriminated against. So why did the boys discriminate? To explain this phenomena, Tashville would use his famous social identity theory. This states that the boys discriminated because they want their self-esteem to increase. And to make sure it happens, they had to make sure the boys belong in the winning group, the best group. And to make sure that happens, they had to make sure the other group loses. Tashville states that it is the us versus them mentality which causes discrimination. The moment where a person perceives themselves as a part of one group and the other person as a part of the other group, it is enough to cause a us versus them mentality where a person would want us to win and them to lose and hence the cause of discrimination. The same principles could be applied to racism, interfaith conflict as well as gang warfare as an extreme case. At the end, it is important to note that we might be categorized into different nations, different faiths. It is important to focus on what's more common, that we are all human beings who just happen to share a single planet. And we all share a common desire to be treated with equality and fairness. As always, thanks for watching.